Pastor Khan Kan leads a network of churches in the Asian nation of Cambodia. This nation of 17 million people is 97% Buddhist. In the 1970s, the Khmer Rouge killed over 2 million people. But today, with God's help, these killing fields are becoming harvest fields. Today, we talk about how to reach Buddhists with the love of Jesus. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast with Dr. Daniel King, where Daniel interviews full-time evangelists, pastors, missionaries, and normal everyday Christians to discover how they share their faith, their powerful testimonies, and amazing stories that will inspire you to reach people with the good news. And now, here's your host, missionary and evangelist, Daniel King. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. On this podcast, we love talking about evangelism. And so make sure that you subscribe and keep listening because every single time we have an episode, we hear great stories of what God is doing around the world. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Pastor Khan from the nation of Cambodia. Thank you for being on the Evangelism Podcast with me. Okay. So thank you very much for having me here, Pastor uh, Evangelist Daniel King. So, brother, it is so wonderful to have you here, and I have been praying for the nation of Cambodia. It's a nation of about 17 million people, and according to the st statistics, 97% of Cambodia is Buddhist yeah. and follows the teachings of Buddha. But you're there being a shining light for Jesus in the midst of great darkness. So tell me a little bit, what is God doing in the nation of Cambodia? Okay, uh, I would like to share about how God is doing in Cambodia. But... I just give a bit of uh, background. In the past, uh, the gospel came to Cambodia uh, about 100 years ago, but at that time, it's through the uh, Catholic priest during the uh, French colony because our country was under colonized by France about 90 years. So at the time, the gospel is so close at the time, but uh, just recently, I think back starting from 1993 after we have election by uh, uh, prime uh, what called temporary government by UN so we have the freedom to preach the gospel however from that time uh, even though we have freedom to preach the gospel but still the community or the local authority is still close to us however recently a few years later we have much freedom now to uh, God open the door, even our prime minister is uh, open for us to to preach the gospel in Cambodia. Even our prime minister uh, come to talk in the Christian group leader as well. So that means he have a heart open for the, us, even though to speak gospel everywhere, even the public places. Places, yeah. Now I heard that you actually now have a position in the government. Tell me about that and what the influence of that allows you to do. Uh, yes, actually, I now I can say that I am not can say that I have a position called uh, Under Secretary of State uh, in the Ministry of Cults and Religion. So through this position, that means I have the the right to uh, meet the higher high-ranking people and tell them about Jesus. Also, I can go from place to place that. Uh, people like uh, give me a respect of me so that it's easy for me to tell people about Jesus. So it's really influenced from that. Yeah. And so I heard that I am supposed to call you Your Excellency <laughs> because you are a man deserving of great honor. <laughs> well, Your Excellency, I I think the, the greatest title that we can have is that of Servant of Jesus Christ. And you are a servant of Jesus and you are a wonderful pastor. Tell me about the, the the churches that you have been planting 
in different parts of Cambodia, and and how does that happen? Yes, actually, uh, we plan now. Uh, we there are one hundred and fifty five uh, by last year, so we plan one hundred and fifty five churches in Cambodia. So how we do it? We do it like. You know, I train, I train the new pastor and leader so that uh, they can go out, they can go out to the mission field to plant the churches to preach the gospel in the villages. Also, we do it through a community help. Sometimes we do the water well thriller. We drill uh, with, uh, the village that there is no gospel. We go and uh, partner with the local authority, and then we drill the well there, and we ask them to plant the church there. So they open for us because we help them, and they open for us to uh, preach the gospel and plant a church. They they help us as well. Yeah. So this is the way that we come and uh, plant the church in the villages. Yeah. I love the idea of planting wells because people need fresh water, and Jesus said, uh, let all who thirst come to me and drink. And the lady at the well in Samaria, in John chapter 4, Jesus uh, talked to her about living water. And so we give them the fresh water, but then also are able to give people the living water that comes straight from heaven. Yes, that's right. Amen. Yeah, because uh, we not just only give only... Uh, uh, physical water, but also through that we can give them the living water as well. So because they are spiritual, uh, really thirsty for the Word of God. Yeah. Now tell me about some of the the outreaches that you do. I, I know that you've been involved in Christmas in Cambodia, and you have uh, been uh, talking to people about Jesus at the during the time of the birth of Jesus. What do those outreaches look like? Yes, uh, for the Christmas outreach, normally we do it the Christmas gift to the children in the rural village. So we, uh, we gather the children in the village to come together. We tell them Jesus story. We teach them song and we present them the gifts because we said that this is just only the gift, uh, physical gift, just last a, a few days or you know a short time, but. Especially the love of God that is the really gift for, for them. Jesus is the gift for them for eternal life. So for Christmas gift, we do that, we get the ring. Also, we do the Christmas outreach by uh, do Christmas celebration. We invite people come together to one place. We serve them a meal and then we can have opportunity to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ during that uh, celebration. Yeah. Now tell me some about your testimony. How did you become a believer in Jesus? And then how did you become a pastor? Okay, uh, back in 1998, I was away from my house because I was an, uh, I, I, my, I am an orphan, a mother, motherless. I mean, uh, I don't have mother because my mother passed away in 1994. And my father remarried. And then uh, I don't like my stepmother, so I had to leave home to live in a Buddhist temple to serve the monks, Buddhist monk. And then finally I end up in another town. I became uh, the bad boy, or I can say the gangster, in 1998. So in 1999, I feel that I want to study English with foreigner because I know English a little bit already. So I want to study English with the foreigner so that uh, I want to be interpreter. But the place that I come to study, which is a, a Filipino missionary, the church, so I come to study there. However, before I don't like to to go to the church uh, to study there because I I don't like Christian. I hate Christian. I even Christian, I want to fight Christian and I stone the church. So, but finally, if I don't go there, I don't have money to study outside. So I force myself come to study, attend the class. And the class, it is not an un English class at that time. It was the Bible class. So I attend the Bible class. However, I don't care the Bible class or whatever because I want to learn English. I want to speak English. Your English is very good. <laughs> you speak wonderful English yeah. now. So through that, through that, uh, the church require all the students come to church every uh, midweek service, prayer meeting, and Sunday service. 
So I love to listen to my uh, my uh, pastor preaching so that I can learn English. So I keep coming on every Sunday, every midweek service, I non-stop. So after five months later, I realized that after I read the Bible and I I I find out, uh, especially from the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that for all have sinned. So I look at to myself, oh, I have sinned because I, I was a bad boy. Yeah. So that's why from that time, early of 2000, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior is through coming to the English class. Yeah. Wow. And then how, how do you become a pastor? Oh, yeah. So when I was an unbeliever, my heart to be a, a teacher because I want to teach people. So when I become Christian and after I study the Bible class in my, my church, so it God revealed to me, God want me to be uh, the pastor to shepherd the people who are lost. So that's why from that time I pray that Lord God, after I finish my high school and I will uh, continue the Bible school so I can become the pastor. So I finished my high school in 2002 and Bible school in 2004. So through that, first I served in my church, but uh, finally God called me out from my church to plan my own ministry which is called Evangelical, Fellows, uh, Evangelical Mission Association. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about Buddhism, because you said that you are an angry Buddhist. Yeah. You even want to throw stones <laughs> at the Christians. You're kind of like the Apostle Paul. <laughs> he watched Stephen mm-hmm. be stoned. He was uh, there at the stoning of Stephen, but then he had an encounter with Jesus yeah. and gave his whole life to, to serving God. Yeah. And, and so here you were. You were an angry Buddhist, but... The love of Jesus touched your heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that it's very interesting looking at the some of the, the differences between the Buddhist religion and the, the Christian religion. Uh, of course, Buddha, uh, he was enlightened. And I uh, got to go to India and see the tree. It's called the, the Bodhi Gaya tree that they say that Buddha was sitting under Mm -hmm. when he was enlightened. And so when I saw that, I I began to study some of of what uh, what Buddha thought. And and, you know, he he had the these four truths that he discovered. Mm -hmm. And the first truth was that all is suffering, that uh, everything is is suffering, Mm -hmm. Um, that everything uh, in the world uh, it, it causes suffering. And then the second truth was that this suffering is caused by desire. That if you want something, like for example, if if uh, you want a car, you see somebody who has a beautiful new car mm-hmm. and you begin to be jealous, then you feel bad mm-hmm. on the inside because you want the car that they want. Well, you start to suffer because you want what they have. And uh, then, so all the suffering uh, that... Suffering is caused by desire. That uh, then the third truth is that the way to rid yourself of suffering is to rid yourself of desire. And then Buddha taught an eightfold path to help people to rid themselves of desire. And and when Buddha was born, he was a prince. Yeah, yeah. And one day he was being carried down the road. He looked out through the curtains, and he saw a beggar man who had leprosy sitting beside the road. And he had never seen anything like that because he was he was a prince. He was grew up with great wealth. And when he saw that, that really impacted him. And, and that's where he went on his search for truth. Now, what's really interesting is that Jesus also dealt with suffering. And when Jesus saw a leper man, you remember what Jesus did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He healed the leper. Yeah. He took away the leprosy. It's beautiful. And then Jesus sat under a tree in the garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. And he begged God, he said, you know, take this cup of suffering away from me. Mm-mm. But he says, but if it be your will. Not my will. Not my will, but yours be done. Yeah. Yeah. And so Jesus actually went to the cross and he suffered 
so that we could be set free from suffering. Mm. Jesus took stripes on his back. Yeah. The sin of the whole world was put on him. Mm. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus suffered so that we could be set free from suffering. Jesus died so that we could have eternal life. And I find that very interesting because the, 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 the problem that Buddha was confronting is a very real human problem. I mean, people suffer. Suffering is very real. It hurts. Mm. But Jesus came with the solution to the problem of suffering. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that is... Am, am I right when I'm describing some of the teachings of Buddha? I don't, I'm not Buddhist, so I don't know. But maybe you know more. Yes, actually, yeah, that, that is right. But uh, the way that uh, Buddha tried to try to help the people out of those kind, there is four things. Mm. One about uh, he want to help people because uh, some kind like people have to be born and grow up, get old, born, get, uh, get uh, born and getting old and sickness and die. So this is Buddha thing about this four thing that he want to try how how to get out people from that thing. Yeah. Because why people have to be born, sickness, uh, old and die. But when he suffer himself a lot in order to find the way, finally, he said that he cannot, cannot take out the people, the nature of people from all of this. That's why he, uh, through that, he tried to do something else. He said he is not a god. This is what the Buddha said, he is not God, but he can show what is right and what is wrong, what is good to do and what is not good to do. So that's why Buddha said that we cannot depend on uh, him. We have to depend on ourselves. Yeah, we have to depend on ourselves, not depend on him. But he said that uh, let the people who follow him need to uh, what can this, uh, wait for another God who is... The, the real God who bring peace to the world and who can help bring love to the world. So this is what Buddha want people not look to him, but to another God who come later after him. Yeah, so this is what Buddha's teaching, yeah, telling the people, yeah. What do you say to a Buddhist who maybe like you does not want Christianity, maybe even would say that I don't want a, a religion from the West, from the white man. Uh, what would you say to somebody who is Buddhist, but uh, you want to present the hope of Jesus to that man? Uh, actually, what we can say, Buddhist or Buddha is just only the leader of one religion. So if we compare the word religions, it means that religion is just only the teaching. So all religion, most religion teach the people what is the good thing to do, what is the bad. But um, religion cannot save people. So what we come to tell you, to come to tell you the creator of the world, the one who create everything and the one who can help us and the one who died on the cross and not just only died, but just three days he uh, resurrected from the dead. So this is what we can tell them that it, Jesus is not one of the religion. Jesus is the God of the world. Jesus is the Savior of the world. So we believe in Jesus, not mean that we change the religion from Buddhism to, uh, to believe in uh, religion of Jesus, but we believe in the personal of the Lord Jesus, who is the real God. So this is the way that we present the gospel to the people, of give hope to the people. Hmm. That gives such wonderful hope. Yeah. And, and really, that, that is what the, the message of Jesus is. He brings hope yeah. to those who are hopeless. I remember I was in the nation of, of Myanmar. Mm. And of course, there's many Buddhist uh, uh, temples in Myanmar, big, beautiful, golden mm. temples. And I was outside one of the temples, and there was a, a man who had a, a cage full of birds. And... Uh, and an old Buddhist man and his wife came. They they bought two birds. They paid money. They bought two birds, mm -hmm. and then they take the birds out of the cage, and then they 
They let the birds go free. Yeah. yeah. And I asked, why, why do they do that? And someone explained to me, he was like, well, you know, maybe they've done some bad thing. Mm. And so now they want to do something good in order to, to make up for what they did that was bad. And so by setting the bird go free, mm. uh, they're doing a good deed to make up for a bad deed. And the problem is that as humans, the Bible says all have sinned. We've all done so many things that are bad. Yeah. And no matter how many good things we do, we cannot balance the scales. It's impossible to be as good as God. Yeah. But that's what Jesus does for us. He lived a perfect life. And then the, the Bible says that the punishment for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So Jesus, he died on the cross to pay the price for our sin. And now by trusting in Jesus, we can be made perfect before God. Yeah. And he takes away all of the bad deeds that we've done. Mm-hmm. And he, he gives us his righteousness. That righteousness means to to be standing uh, right in to be good before God, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what Jesus does. Yes. He brings hope. Yeah, that's where right. releasing a bird can never get you to heaven. Yeah, <laughs> but Jesus can take you to heaven. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that is wonderful. Yeah, because uh, only Jesus, as He said, that He is the way, the truth, and the life. So if people don't come to Him, they cannot take hope for their life. Yeah, actually, normally, uh, people who believe in Buddha, they don't have hope at all. They just, you know, uh, they sometimes they know, but because they said that is because of uh, their tradition, their forefather, when they were born as a Buddhist believer, so they just follow, but they don't understand, clearly understand what they believe. So what they see, they just uh, follow. And sometimes, for back in Cambodia, uh, people know that Christians are good, Jesus Christ are good, but they said that they cannot stop, they cannot uh, 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 give up their religion because if they give up their religion, their parent or their grandparent or relative will get angry with them, sometimes like that. So they can see Jesus is a, a good, Jesus good or can give hope or can give love. But the hard thing, when they want to come to believe in Jesus, sometimes their parents, their relatives criticize them. Yeah. So Jesus, only Jesus is the hope for the people. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so excited to hear that Jesus is working in the nation of Cambodia. Yeah. You're raising up leaders, training pastors, planting churches, preaching the gospel. And I encourage you to continue in, in that uh, I believe that Jesus loves the nation of Cambodia. Amen. And I believe that God is going to send a great move of his Holy Spirit mm. to Cambodia. And I believe that every person in Cambodia needs to hear about Jesus and have the opportunity to to give their lives to Jesus and to receive the salvation that comes through Jesus. So I have a question. A lot of the people who, who listen to this podcast mm. uh if they wanted to to pray for Cambodia or come to Cambodia, uh, is is there opportunities to do that? What what should they be praying for for the nation of Cambodia? Okay, so days before I answer your question, I I don't know what it is term called, but I say that my heart is to turn Killing Field into Harvest Field. Why, wow! Why I said t- uh, uh, turn Killing Field to Harvest Field because the heat hours. Uh, a bad history last in 1975 up to 1979 we were under Khmer Rouge regime that the that communists uh, kill their own people among the when, among the one million people they kill at least two to three million people so that's why if you go there you can see a lot of bones that they collect and keep in one place so this is what I want to see Cambodia turn back to God. So there are many opportunities that uh, if uh, anyone want to come and uh, minister to Cambodia, we either can come to do the, you know, we can do the public uh, evangelic, 
public evangelism or we call crusade, or we can do pastor leader training or do some outreach as community have. Through that, we maybe can, someone wants to help dig a well. Yeah, dig a well, or maybe uh, help build a community school, or maybe they can, you know, like. There are many opportunities because there are needs, many needs there in Cambodia. So, and all those needs, through that we can bring hope to the people. Through what we can have, we can uh, have the way to reach out to people also. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, I agree with you that yeah. we need to turn the killing fields into harvest fields. Amen. And yeah. I believe that Jesus can do that. And I pray for a great harvest yeah. of souls in the nation of Cambodia. Yeah. Let's finish today by praying for Cambodia okay. and lifting up the people of Cambodia yeah. to Jesus. Would you pray for Cambodia, brother? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we come together and we share about what is God doing in Cambodia. And thank you, Lord, for uh, Evangelist uh, Daniel King for helping me to share here. So, Lord God, now I lift up Cambodia to you, Lord God, that you will uh, turn the killing field into the harvest field and turn the heart of the people in Cambodia from belief in religion and come back to the uh, true God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for them, Lord God. I pray that God will bless the people and send more laborers to come to Cambodia to harvest or to the mission field there, Lord, because we need more people come to work alongside with us in order to bring the gospel of salvation to the the whole blessed people. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you love us and you care for us and your grace is abundant. Also, Lord, now I'm praying also for those who are listening the podcast today, Lord, that they will be touched by what we have been sharing, Lord God, so that they can pray for Cambodia as well. Lord, I pray to you that you will do great thing in Cambodia before uh, you are coming the second time, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brother, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. I appreciate it. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity. Yep. Are you called by God to be an evangelist? Do you want to lead millions of people to Jesus? Do you desire to be trained in the practical side of building a ministry? Then check out the Daniel King School of Evangelism. Learn how to be an effective evangelist from Dr. Daniel King's 20 plus years of experience. Daniel King has done crusades all over the world in over 70 nations and has seen over 2 million people give their lives to Jesus. But it wasn't easy. There was no crusade school. So Daniel traveled the world, learning from and observing top evangelists noticing how they successfully won souls for Christ. Now, he wants to share decades of knowledge and experience with you. Topics of the Daniel King School of Evangelism include what is an evangelist, how to be a master soul winner, how to give an altar call, how to organize a crusade, how to raise money for your ministry, and much more. If you want to be an evangelist but don't know where to start, the Daniel King School of Evangelism is for you. Enroll today in the School of Evangelism by going to danielkingministries.com slash evangelism. Thanks so much for listening today. I am excited about telling people about Jesus, and I want to invite you to be a part of helping us to rescue people from hell and take them with us to heaven. There's two things you can do to help. First of all, can you go find the Evangelism Podcast on Apple iTunes and leave us a positive review? By giving a review, you will help other people find these valuable resources about sharing our faith. And second, would you become a financial partner with King Ministries? Every single dollar that people give us enables us to lead at least one person to Jesus. And so that means for only one dollar, you can help start a party in heaven. And so today, I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. You can start out for just a dollar, but if God puts it on your heart to do more, of course you can do more. But please go to kingministries.com and become a monthly partner with us today to help us to lead lead more people to Jesus. Thank you so much, and God bless you.
For more information about how to share your faith or to financially support our worldwide evangelistic outreaches, visit kingministries.com. Again, that's kingministries.com.